On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, team defense. That's what we will focus on this particular show because the Philadelphia 76ers, in order to make a deep run, they need to make sure that team defense is right. They made the moves in the offseason to do so. Was it enough? We'll discuss it next right here at Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. Welcome. You are Locked On 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partners, always from the Enquirer.com, Sixers beat writer Keith Pompey. Keith, what's happening? How you doing, man? What's good, D? How you doing, man? Friday. That's what's good. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) That's all good, man. Uh, We got a lot to get to. Before we get started, we're going to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube, where you get to see the cool backgrounds that we have, which is nothing going on behind us. How about that? All right, Keith, (laughs) we got a lot to talk about, man. Uh, You wanted to talk about the team's perimeter defense after these first two games of the preseason. And we also wanted to kind of just reel that in on the comment that Joel Embiid made on Media Day about being the best team in the NBA defensively. His quest for a Defensive Player of the Year award also, forget about the MVP. And uh, we'll get into that. We also want to talk about the uh, the young player that has taken over NBA Twitter and NBA highlights from France the projected number one overall pick in the next summer's 2022 2023 nba draft i think i say his name right victor webanyama uh and we got to talk about him man two games here in the states in las vegas against the g league team ignite led by scoot henderson the projected number two overall pick at the point guard position two talented young guys that we need to give our two cents on but we'll do that later keith let's begin with the team defense Starting off on the perimeter overall, we get to the team defense later, but you wanted to speak on the, the, the perimeter defense first. So what really jumped out to you in these first two games that we needed to discuss? Well, I don't think we can, if we're going to be fair, you really can't talk about the, the first game. I mean, because, you know, the Sixers didn't have, um, you know, they did not have um, their entire starting lineup. DJ Tucker, more. Your house or or house or or mb right they just didn't play uh pucker and mb they didn't play so the thing is you know right about now when you look at that second game the, the thing that really stood out to me was you know basically in the, in the first quarter the cleveland cavaliers shot seven for 12 on mostly wide open three pointers right for the half they shot 50 percent 10 for 20. Now, now we know that in these preseason games, and especially this one, you know, both squads rested their starter and, and reduced some key reserves minutes after after intermission. So we, the Sixers, looked better in the second half, but their guys that are going to play heavy minutes weren't really playing, you know. And and I think that Tyrese Maxey spoke on it. He said mainly we are trying to work on being a great help defensive team playing with each other, playing for each other on the defensive end. That's extremely hard because we got a lot of different guys coming from a lot of different systems. Now we're just trying to bring it together in one in one system, right? Now the problem is, and, you know, when we think of Maxi and, and we think of James Harden, you know, they're known for their offensive production, not for lockdown defense. And, you know, so that's a struggle for those guys. So that's why it's important for the Sixers to communicate and provide help defense. You know, there were times Wednesday where the Sixers ran, I'm talking about their other guys, you know, ran to guard their position only to realize someone's open, someone was open on the perimeter. That led to there being two slip slows on closeouts, right? So that happened. And, uh, you know, also there were other times where, 
they were matched up against the wrong guy or you had two players on one guy and all the other team had to do, Cleveland had to do is swing the ball out and, you know, create wide open opportunities for their Cavs teammates. So to me, this is something that the Sixers really need to work on, something that they really need to work on in order for them to, uh, you know, uh, basically be able to compete. Uh, they definitely need to be able to do that. And for me, because uh, I think of, and look, I know a lot of people like, and then the other side, dislike the PJ Tucker part. He's the one that everybody focuses on with the off season move. And Keith, I keep saying it. You can attest to it. You can back me up on this. The one that really gets me uh, from the off season pickups is DeAnthony Melton because of his two way ability. And look, he's going to be a reserve player. He's going to play probably around 25 minutes a night, maybe sometimes more. But his defensive ability that he's able to bring, what well, we've seen so many, and while he is a reserve, we've seen so many guards cook the Sixers' backcourt in the past, in the most recent years, as good as Ben Simmons was here and as good as Matisse Seibel was coming off the bench. Also, there have been players who have just simply gotten off against that backcourt. And that might be the same case here and with this lineup because of, Harden and Maxi starting the game off in the backcourt and letting those those starters get loose. And there's so many talented guards, so many talented wing players in the NBA where it's just going to happen sometimes. So I bring that up because going back to Harden and Maxi, those two have to be better as far as their effort goes. Maxi gives the effort. He's just not good at yet at, at you know at the defensive side of the ball. He has to improve. So when we give him all the credit that we do for being this ta super talented offensive player that he is his defense needs to catch up also so when he talks about playing that help defense and, and all of that you're not starting danny green who is a very smart team defender nor are you starting matisse Thibel, who we know is a very good team defender and a great individual defender pj tucker i don't know who he's going to match up with on certain nights it's, he's going to be a, pl a plus a positive defensively I just can't wait to see what their concepts are going to look like, how much they may change differently because of P.J. Tucker versus Thibel and Green, where Thibel is more athletic. He's younger. He can probably his recovery time is much quicker and he can do different things now with with Tucker, who is going to be a help guy. But also, can you can you put him on, let's say, uh, Kyrie Irving? You can't. You have to put him on someone like uh Kevin Durant or 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 Ben Simmons or Joe Harris, you can't put them on Kyrie Irving. That is going to have to go to Tyrese Maxey or James Harden. And they need to be confident in what they can do individually. And then to your point of what Maxey was laying, relaying, their help defense has to be on point in order for them to succeed. It's just that simple. Now, when they do come in with their wave of Melton and Thibel, that will help change things a lot. Daniel House also we'll worry about the scoring when they're out there at that point, but those three will help out defensively once they do come in to help out the perimeter. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, they're talking about, they want to have the best defense and, you know, it will help out. But right now, but what we saw, like, and again, they only played one, one game, sure. One game with, with all their guys, but that revealed that they got a long way to go because the, the thing is the, the problem is, you don't have the only lockdown defender that you kind of sort of have in the starting lineup um, is, well, yeah, MB, but he's the center. He's the anchor of the defense. So, but, but the thing, so he's kind of like protecting the rim, but the only one that you really have, that's really a good defender outside of him is Tucker. PJ Tucker. So, you know, and it's like, it's going to be a lot of help, a lot of communicating and, and, and things like that. And the thing is, you know, I, I get what we're all saying. Like, it's great to say, OK, we're going to bring these guys off the bench. But how many minutes are we going to are you going to play them? Like what's okay. going to happen? What's going to happen in end of game situations when when you go back to your starters? I mean, is there going to be one? Are you going to like play for your starters? And if who, some whomever's having a bad game? You're going to bring in like, you know, a, a defensive specialist you, 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 to replace them. You, you know what I mean? So are you talking about in this scenario where it's a close game and they still need points? Well, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. that's what I'm saying. If you close game and you need points. So, 
I mean, to me, that's just something that, you know, again, it's one game. You got to be realistic about it. But um, but at the same time, there was a lot of holes. There was a lot of wide open shooters, you know, out there in, in, in the perimeter. So and then, I mean, the guys, are, you know, George Niang and them are like, look, you know, this is something that we got to do. We have to realize that we have to play positionless basketball. We got it. We got to like find people like, you know, it's no longer, you know, you running down the court. They go to four man. I go follow him. Nah, you got to like pick up somebody else, you know, and, and, and do that. So, you know, again, it's one game, but, you know, all we were hearing is about the best defense and this and that. But then we realized that, you know what, is is a lot of work that they're going to have to put in for that just because of, you know, and unfortunately for this team, there's not a lot of quality two way players. You, you know what I'm saying? In the in the in the in the starting lineup, they're they're good players. Now, don't get me wrong, but they're not two way players. So so it, that's one of those things that they just have to, you know, work on. They have two preseason games, and they're just going to have to work on it because, I mean, they have a gauntlet early in the season with, you know, uh, some pretty good teams that they're playing early on. And they're going to be tested. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, it should be should be a fun to monitor throughout the season to see what those guys do on the perimeter individually, how much they improve, and how much the two guys that we focus on, maybe three, focus on defensively off the bench, uh, in in particular. On the other side, we talk about the team defense because in order for uh, those things to also happen with the perimeter D, the overall team defense needs to be strong. And Joel Embiid said that they want to be the number one team defense in the NBA. We'll discuss that on the other side and how realistic it is for this basketball team next right here, Locked On 76ers. Let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player development, team matchup, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Definitely do it today, people. Definitely do it today. I hope you didn't do anything yesterday. Well, you should have, because it seemed like you should have just taken the under on everything in that Thursday night football contest between Denver and uh, <laughs> that that game. The Colts. Denver and Indianapolis. That game was awful. Yeah, man. Awful. So take. I hope you took the under, everybody on everything because <laughs> it was awful <laughs> thanks again for making locked on 76ers we like football too thank you for making locked on 76ers your first listen every day make sure you check out the ultimate pro basketball preview starting october 10th at six a six episode extravaganza to get you ready for the nba season the local team experts and the nba insiders of the locked on podcast Network and Odyssey all combining into one Ultimate NBA Preview. That's starting on October 10th. Search for Ultimate Pro Basketball Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. I'm on one of them. I know I did one. We were talking with about five other guys, four other five other guys about one. Keith was busy, so I, I represented us on this one particular uh, preview so make sure you all look out for it can't wait for you to check it out so appreciate it uh when you're able to do so all right man listen we got i was just looking at the stats from last season and joel Embiid stated that he would like for this team to be the number one team defensively in the nba um this is not new so when we talk about selective uh hearing and selective uh, where your memory is when it comes to certain things that players say, because it, it fits a lot of what people want to talk about the narrative and like Embiid always talking about the MVP and stuff, right, Keith? I, I know that you can also back me up on this where we've heard him talk about him and Ben Simmons 
being defensive player of the year in the past um or ben being it over him or him wanting it and both of them can't win it right but uh that that has been something that he has mentioned in the past so this year at media day where you guys had a chance to talk with him he pointed out how he wanted to be uh the best defensive team in the nba and do they have a real chance to doing so so i was looking at the stats from last year they gave up they were eighth in the nba at giving up tied with phoenix at at number eight giving up 173 points per game uh last season the uh team uh, against the Sixers shot 45.8 percent and from deep they shot 34.6 percent from beyond so you know even though we did have a lot of problems with their defensive uh issues a year ago in the perimeter and to your focus of the game on Wednesday against the the Cleveland Cavaliers in that backcourt um they they did okay as far as 34.6 points uh per game from beyond so they you know they have to make sure they tighten up on that the numbers aren't horrible they gave up 21.6 foul shots uh, per game for the opponent offensive rebounds we know that was a problem that's also part of your defense by boxing out and simply going after the board uh defensively uh, re rebounding they gave up 34 you can't give up 10 offensive you know on average it seems like about 10 a game so basically they just need to uh be much much better uh where with where they were defensively last season and it wasn't awful being eighth but if you were going to be the top team defensively in the league boston by the way was number one uh defensively giving up only 104 five, 104 points per game they were very strong especially uh, since january one and then they went on the run and it helped lead them to the nba finals keep do they have it in them as we just talked about the perimeter but now you incorporate Joel Embiid as the anchor, as you said, some of the other players that they have coming off the bench, there will be some defensive lineups that they do incorporate in, in the game. Do they have what it takes to be the number one defensive team in the NBA? You know what? I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, right now, like, you know, if you base it off of that, the first game that, that we saw with that starting lineup, you know, I would have to say no. I mean, uh, I'm not, like you said, it's, it's one game. I'm not. It's, it's one game. But here's the thing about that stat that you gave. And it's a good stat. But I, I I would love to know what was it like after what? Where did they rank in all these categories after the acquisition of James Hart? You know what I mean? Because, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where we look at it beforehand. And then after James. Now, again, I'm not saying Ben Simmons didn't play uh Steph Curry Seth Curry no one's going to say that he's a lockdown defender right you know Drummond you know he has some strengths but you know you know he's not like that guy where you're saying he's one of the, the um you know the top def, you know one of the top guys like Embiid is on, on that on that in that category so I need I would love to know what he can do now again when people come out with goals, there are lofty goals. Like, and you you always have to thrive for being number one. When you see that the, the certain type of players that they upgraded with, for the most part, they're defensive minded players. You got Matisse, then you got Tucker, you have Melton, right? But the, the question mark is is kind of sort of like, you know, the the two there they're gonna be two guys who are really gonna have to improve their D for them to 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 be number one and I, I think it's going to have to come down to James Harden and Doc said this Joel said this they have to be more aggressive he has to be more aggressive on a defensive end like you said it Maxi is trying he's just you know right there is not there you yeah. know Tobias Harris has shown that he can be an approved defender he did that last year and I think that came down to effort you know he was used to early in the league being that that guy that where he was just a scorer, a shooter. So I just feel like Maxi has to improve and James Harden has to improve because what's going to happen is teams are going to figure out mismatches and they're going to uh, exploit them. Now, also, when you bring in a guy like Melton, you bring in a guy like uh, um, a, a guy like Matisse Thibel, but then what happens when you bring in a guy like George Niang. What happens when you bring in a guy like um, Furkan Korkmaz, Shake Milton? 
those are three guys that teams are going to target and they're going to go after. Mm -hmm. So that's why the communication and, and, and trying to get these switches and everything is going to be helpful. So if they communicate, yeah, they can be a better defensive team, but for, for, for where they are right now to say that they're going to be number one, that's just a lot of work. I'm not saying it can't happen. It's just a lot of work they're going to have to put in to get there to that level. Niang, Milton, Cork, Miles, when they come in the game, my question would be who are they out there with? Where are they at as far as the score, time, situation, why they are in there, with who they are in there with? Are they looking at more of an offensive thing? Just giving a breather with that lineup. And all of that. So, you know, we focus on all that stuff when those substitutions are made. Why is Doc Rivers putting this guy in here? Why is Dan Burke's defense look like this? What is he trying to do? Et cetera. They, I, they're they not just going to throw guys out there without having a, a reason, of course, to, to back it up. And But we know the emphasis on the offseason was was uh, depth, toughness, and, and they have that now in it. And will it translate to the floor? I would hope so. After making all these moves and having that focus, on these types of players. Montrez Harrell is an offensive guy. You know, he's not necessarily a defender. He can rebound a little bit, he can get going. He's not a defender. That was Drummond and that was Dwight Howard, more so Howard than Drummond. Drummond was more of a rebounding specialist. How much does Paul Reed play? When does he get substituted in? What position is he playing? The five, the four? Do they put him on, like we saw in the past, DeMar DeRozan and have him, you know, five minutes Go out there and, and and run around with DeMar DeRozan to give Tobias Harris, P.J. Tucker a break there or give give Matisse Thibault a break there. Throw something different at them. These types of defensive things I want to see and going to pay attention to this year. Uh, what are their principles going to be? How much effort are they going to be? You know, how much help defense is going to be there? How much sliding? How Are they talking in order for it to help? All these little things have to take place in order for them to be that team, that number one defense in the NBA, like Joel B wants them to be. So we'll see if it happens. I think they have enough to be, again, a top 10 defense in this league. They would they would have to be somewhere in that top five, hopefully, in order to try to win a championship and, and be that good of a team in order to get it done. So we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. We'll keep monitoring. And I'm sure we'll talk about it again uh, when we analyze the game afterwards. You know what, Keith? The defense is terrible tonight. You know what I mean? They're going to have some of those. And then I'd, I'd imagine that they'll have some weird, like, yo, that defense was strong out there. That, you know, how they shut things down against, most importantly, a good team. Good team, good backcourt, good wing players, where they're able to slow them down and not let them get loose. Man, uh, maybe if they had another 7'5 guy on their team that's athletic, he would be able to help. That's Victor Webinyama that young, talented player that everybody's talking about. Keith, we need to discuss and give our two cents on the 18-year-old product from France who has the NBA Twitter and NBA people buzzing. We'll get into that final segment right here, Locked On 76ers. <laughs> Look at that cool, that cool music to bring us back, huh? You like that, people? A little tweak? You like that? <laughs> <laughs> you drink some wine to that, right? I'm not, I'm not even a drinker, but you get what I'm saying. You about to drink wine? I ain't even a drink. <laughs> sure. uh, you you start, 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 start. Pop hey, hey, that's something that our dads and grandpops had in the basement back some in the day. Group. <laughs> so, yeah, they had that music on. You know, some some champ pipple. You know, some, as, as Fred Sanford would say, Sham Pipple with some champagne and ripple <laughs> with that type of music. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. Uh, Keith Pompey, Devon Givens with you. There's going to be a lot of Sham Pipple and ripple, champagne and ripple being drunk this season by some general managers as they try to figure out how not to win games, Keith, so they can tank and uh, land the number one overall draft pick for the 2023 NBA draft next June in the summer. And that's to get the prize prospect, man. This guy's really good from France. This is the first time I had a chance to see him. 
outside of just highlights. And when he was on, I was doing the show at night in the studio. So the way our cameras are set up, the cameras are in front of us for television and for YouTube. So I can't really, my vision is kind of, uh, you know, uh, blocked by seeing the television. So I'm going like this, trying to peek around, uh, just seeing the guy do certain things, monitoring Twitter during the show to see what Victor Webinyama is doing at 7-5. His handle looking like, and I'm not saying he's Kevin Durant, but just being able to move as free as he is like Kevin Durant, his athleticism. He's shooting fadeaway threes, falling out of bounds uh, along the sideline. He is uh, catching alley-oops where guys are throwing it behind their head in transition, and he's just catching it and banging it. Um, his footwork looks good. His, his, his step-back jump shot off the bounce on, on defenders that are right up on him, and he, you know, snatching the rebound, loose ball, picking him up, turning around, and he's about right outside of the painted area, Keith. And because of his wingspan and his length, he just turns around and he dunks it on, on the defender, posterizing him. This guy has the goods, man. He can move. He runs fluidly. A lot of times when we see these big guys, they look awkward, don't they? Right? They can't run. They're running. They're kind of hunched over. He's straight up. He's moving. He's running. This guy's a talent. I don't know how it's all going to translate, but what I do know is a lot of teams are going to wish they had a chance to get him next June in the draft. Yeah, I, I agree. A lot of teams. It's funny, though, because you look at – I remember the first time, you know, I was talking to somebody and they were bringing this guy up, and I was able to tell him how big he was and how skilled he was. And you know, me, I'm thinking, like, he's going to be a rim protector, this, that, and I'm watching. I'm like, yo, he's a guard. Like, he looks like a guard. And and you look at this the, the modern NBA, and I guess you know we talk about positionless basketball. I mean, you look at uh, Chet Holmgren. You know he can dribble, he can shoot from the outside. Yeah. I mean, you know we 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 talk about a lot of these guys who these Euros who who come out there and 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 play a certain way, and it's just like it's a different brand of basketball. I mean, he's 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 going to be phenomenal. The one thing that I will say is that. You know, I would like for him. I mean, I guess he's going to have to bulk up a little bit because it's going to get a little physical. You know, you look at you look at uh, Persingas like Chris. Ross, he was the same way when he came out. We were all like in love with his athletic ability. I mean, I, I remember going to his workout when in Las he, Vegas in, in Las Vegas. I went to his workout in Las Vegas and, you know, I swore that I saw the second coming of Kevin Durant. And then all of us, but you know, a, a thin guy. And then all of a sudden, you see the injuries. You see all this other stuff happening. And then now we look at Chet Hungren and the injuries. This guy appears to be better than both of them, right? Right? It, like That's athletically. Yeah, I agree. The, the the thing is, you know, when I watch him, I just keep saying to myself, "Bruh, please, please get in the weight room. Please do certain things to whereas." you know, you can be a valuable, uh, about, you know, a, a quality player in this league as opposed to being someone that we're, we're going to say, man, he was never able to reach his full potential because the skill set is there. It's just that a lot of these guys are are, are super thin. Um, but, again, you look at him and you say he has all the tools to be a solid player in this league. He does, man. He he looks he looks the part. And as I said, just just watching him, it, just the fluidity that he that as he moves at being so big versus a lot of these other players that we've seen, at, you know, six eleven, seven foot, and 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 above, and him being seven four, seven five, whatever they said at at the age of eighteen, he does have to bulk up. That's clear. We can all see it. We we all see it. He looks a little bigger already than Chet Holmgren. To me, yeah, um, he does look a little bit bigger. But once once he's in the NBA weight program and they get him in, in there, we'll see if he can put on some more body weight and be able to absorb a lot of that the contact that comes with playing in this league. These are some big dudes, man. And I know he's playing pro over there in France or whatever team he's playing for. But he is a, a talent. And should the Sixers be up doing a rebuild 2.0, Keith, or just go for the championship this year? What, what do you think? Because oh, Lord, this guy's good, man. <laughs> this guy's good. Please don't talk to me about that. Please don't talk to me about that. <laughs> hey, you know, we're both on the same one on that one. Uh, but no, he he's really good. And I don't want to uh, I don't want to ignore Scoot Henderson, the point guard that played for the G League Ignite last season. And 
he's now of age where he'll be able to come out in the NBA draft next summer also. And he looks to be the projected number two overall pick, the point guard as a prospect, man. He also looks good. His jump shot is, is on point. His ability to get to the basket, his craftiness. Of course, he's going to have to work on his defense like any young point guard coming into the league. But for the G League Ignite, if he comes to Philadelphia or comes to Delaware to play the Blue, Blue Coats, I'm, I'm hoping that I have an opportunity to go check him out and see him up close, up close and personal because what I saw on television this year, coming back from last season, saw him a little bit last season, coming back from this one, man, just, just going to – I really want to see him up close and personal. I like him also. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. I mean, yeah, he's pretty good. I mean, you know, it, unfortunately for him, um, he's not going to be the first pick because of the guy from France. You know what I mean? But, but um, yeah, he he's a really good player. Really good player. I like him a lot. Yeah, I, I like him. And uh, I was looking at him. You know, you always look at these players and like, like we just talked about with with Webinyama. Who does he look like? Who who does he play like? He has like a Stefan Marbury type of fearlessness with a Dennis Smith Jr., uh, you know, the ability, both of them being able to jump and, and finish at the rim. But he has a better jump shot than than those guys, it, it appears right now. And he's so young, but man, he's talented. These guys are good, man. They're gonna be they're gonna be some good players in the NBA. So we'll be monitoring that all season long, seeing how bad the Utah Jazz are gonna be. When does Shea Gilgis Alexander take a seat for the Oklahoma City Thunder? How about um, uh, somebody in the East, Keith? Give me somebody. The Washington Wizards. When do they decide? You know what, Bradley Beal, we love you. We got to go get Webin Yama. We got we got to go get the French dude, man. Nah, uh, this, I don't think. Nah, I don't think. If I'm them, I'm not doing that. I, I like him, but I ain't getting rid of um, Brad. For him. Hey, they haven't been winning up to this point. So uh, just throwing some teams out there. See what where the tanking will really, uh, who's jockeying to lose the most games. And Adam Silver is going to have a problem on his hands. I'll tell you that much. Well, listen, we got to thank everybody. It's been a great week. We appreciate everybody checking in uh, every day. Uh, thanks for making Locked On 76 is your first listen every day on Monday. We'll preview game number three of the Sixers preseason schedule. We'll dive into a little bit more overlooking the season uh, overall. Now make your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Basketball. It's about that time. You got to get in there. You need to know some things about what players to go after. Josh Lloyd hosting number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, where can they find us? Like you just said, wherever you can get your podcast, we get um, get Josh Lloyd. You can get us and you can also get us on YouTube. So when you go to our YouTube channel, right, what you want to do is you want to click on the uh, Liberty Bell and become a subscriber. Also, you can listen to my man D. D, what time are you gonna be on the radio tonight? Tonight, six to ten. Tonight, full show, yeah, man. Full show, okay. Full show flow. So, my man, listen to my man D on the Divine Giving Show on ninety-seven five FM Radio, Philadelphia, from six to ten p.m. You can All also right, so you, a lot of Phillies tonight. Yeah, playoff game Philly. today. Yeah, so, man. a lot of Phillies tonight. Some Eagles previewing the weekend game in Arizona, and of course the Sixers. And then you can also follow my man at Divine G975. You can follow me at, at Pompeii on Sixers. And you can read my work on Inquire.com and in the Philadelphia Inquire. Absolutely, man. Keith, have a great weekend. Everybody listening and watching, we appreciate you again all week. You also have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you on Monday. See you. Peace.